Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. We can hear. Yes, sir. Can hear. Right. <clears throat> okay, then uh, today's session is on employee movements, objectives, session objectives. So after studying this, of course, I sent you the note. After studying the note and the lecture successfully, you should be able to yes achieve these things because of time limitation. I think uh, this is for you. You are being an advanced student. I hope we'll be able to understand. So these are called learning outcomes. Right. First one, promotions. So you know, employee movements in, uh, in an organization, there can be many employee movements such as promotions, transfers, layoff, demotions, dismissal, termination, retrenchments, you know, and retirements. So then I will, uh, I will not focus on layoff, but the demotions also depending on the time, the dismissals maybe, and then terminations, retrenchments and retirements, I will focus in addition to uh, promotions and transfers. So first, uh, let me go to promotions. So what is the promotion? Generally, you know, what is the promotion? So that is an advancement. There is an advancement of an employee to a job uh, which can be perceived as a better one in terms of rank, in terms of rank. So therefore, a promotion is the appointment of an employee who is currently working in the organization to a job that is higher, greater than the job being performed by him. So th these are some definitions. So you can go through, but this one is very important for you to uh, notice, not or learn, essentially there must be, uh, there must be two elements for an employee movement to be called as a promotion, to be called as a promotion. There must be essential two elements. So what are they? First one is an increase of the pay. There must be an increase of the pay. So that means because of the promotions, the employee should be able to get a salary which is higher than the previous salary with regard to previous job. Then the second element is a better title, more prestigious or better title, better title. For example, if our employee, you know, had been performing the jobs before, okay, assume uh, yeah, until yesterday, the employee performed the job called assistant accountant. Today, he was promoted to the post of accountant. Uh, then that adjective assistant is no longer. So therefore, the, the title accountant is better than the title assistant accountant. Deputy general manager the title and the general manager. So general manager, that title is better than deputy general manager. Okay, so therefore there must be a better title. Also, there must be a pay increase. Also, there can be, you know, there may be certain, you know, other changes, certain other changes, you know, such as, such as uh, increased responsibility, more autonomy, more freedom, a bigger desk, bigger room, even uh, a, a vehicle, you know, a vehicle maintained by the company. Assume, up, uh, you know, until, until the person got the promotion, the person had to use his or her own car, the relevant employee. But because of the promotion now, uh, he is going to, he got a vehicle that is maintained by the company. Also, uh, in some cases, there is a driver also. There is a driver given. So these things are also there, but essentially, there must be a better title. There must be a... Uh, an increase of the pay. Then there is a word called quasi promotion. What is this? Is that a promotion? It's not a normal promotion. Quasi promotion is, a no, is not a normal promotion. Uh, how does it differ from a, a normal promotion? 
Okay, how does it differ from a normal promotion? You know, it differs because of uh, because of the fact that a quasi promotion doesn't involve increased responsibilities, increased uh, duties, you know, increased duties and corresponding or associated uh, increased responsibilities are not there. You know, are not with regard to that promotion. Simply a better title and a better pay. The employee has to perform the same duties. The employee has to be responsible for same, you know, the successful performance of same tasks and duties. Uh, that is called a quasi promotion. You know, especially uh, in order to, you know, in order to increase the opportunities of promotions, uh, good organizations they use quasi promotions. Also, there is something called upgrading, so you can understand. Then up classy promotion for, from within the same functional field, also promotion to different functional field. Right. Okay, so therefore you have a have a look at this picture. So you can see, you know, the this these people uh, did not get the promotion. This person got the promotion. Now moving towards the uh, the Sinet or Sinet or Sinit or Sinit is said E N I T H S. Sinit or the uh, higher, the highest point of the uh, profession. Have a look at this also. So you can see many promotions. If you are here, assume you were here in the past and now you are here. So that means you received uh, five promotions. You received five promotions throughout your employment life within this particular organization. Then you came to uh, see me or the highest uh, point or highest position of the uh, profession. So that may be a charm, that may be financial management. So if it is a charm, that may be general manager, human resources, or deputy general manager, human resources. Then importance of promotions. I think no, no need to discuss, no, no need to take much time on discussing the importance of promotions. So promotions are much coveted, much you know, desired in a society and Sri Lanka is not an exception. Sri Lankan society is not an exception. So therefore almost every employee expects at least one promotion during his or her employment life. But usually, uh, Usually there are employees who expect uh, several promotions, if not all the promotions available, but at least several promotions. Think of yourself. Do you expect promotions? So of course the answer is yes. Definitely the answer is yes. Then as far as I am concerned, did I expect promotions? Of course, I expected promotions. Right, then these are some advantages that an organization will be able to enjoy because of giving promotions or will be able to have because of promotions. The first one is more likely that employees increase their productivity in order to get promotions. If the productive level of productivity is linked with the promotion and then there's a certain amount of productivity to be produced by the employee in order to make that employee promoted to the next job no, I mean the job of uh, the higher level, uh, then that employee has to produce that expected level of production. So therefore, uh, productivity and promotion opportunities are significantly associated, yes. Then when employees who expect career development, you know, perceive that there are promotion opportunities within the organization. So when they perceive, when they understand in that way, then they become more happy and hopeful, you know, optimistic, increase in loyalty to the organization. Without increasing loyalty, then they understand that they cannot get promotions. Assume for a certain promotion, there must be at least uh, five years service within the organization, five years service. Then the employee had to, has to perform for five years. So increase in loyalty to the organization. In terms of organizational behavior, 
organizational commitment to the organization. Sorry, oh, yes, organizational commitment of the employee will get increased. Then the organization will be able to get more contribution from younger employees who expect to get promoted. Also, uh, the organization will be in a position of attracting suit suitably qualified applicants. If there are good promotion opportunities, qualified applicants, you know, will get uh, attracted and then they will decide to apply for job vacancies of the organization. Okay, so likewise, please understand what is this uh, sa salutary effect, you know, uh, favorable desirable effect on the satisfaction of the promoted person's needs for what psychological things self esteem belonging and security okay now methods of promoting employees mainly there are two ways there are two ways of promoting employees the first one first way is by management decision so under this an employee is selected for a promotion on the basis of information already known by the management of the organization. So therefore the relevant management or the relevant decision makers, they know, you know a certain set of information about a particular employee. And then if they understand that that employee is the right person, then uh, secretly or not in an open way, but in a close way, they decide to promote that person. Uh, that is called you know, by this one. That's the meaning of this uh, way of promoting. So promotion, promotion opportunity is not published. So that means there is no advertising. There is no advertising. There is no calling applications for the uh, you know, vacant post. So I assume there is a vacant post. So that's the promotion opportunity. So therefore, this is called a close, you know, this is called, uh, this is called the close method. Then the second way of promoting internal advertisement. Then through the notice board, circulars, internal magazines, papers of, or newsletters, the management advertises the vacancy. So that all interested and qualified applicants, you know, will be able to apply. So then those who are not interested, they can decide not to apply who are not interested in the promotion. So they can decide not to apply. Okay, so therefore, uh, this is called open method. Uh, the first one is called close method. Which one is better? Generally, the better approach is open method. Why? Why, you know, the, uh, there is a chance, you know, there is a chance for uh, all the people who are interested in getting the promotion to apply. Therefore, uh, these people will think the situation is fair, not unfair. Also, maybe transparency, because of transparency. If the decision of promotion is taken by the top manager uh, in a secret way, there may be employees who think the situation or the, that decision is not fair. However, you know, there are advantages of close method. What are they? I have mentioned here. Please read them and understand. For example, you know, if the time is, if there is no sufficient time to call for applications, then we have to use this one. Also, if there is a very outstanding person, assume, uh, the, the, the job of general manager became vacant and there is a very outstanding person inside, you know, well known to everyone throughout the organization. And there are no other, you know, persons who can be compared with this person. And then the, you know, the decision is obvious. Who is going to be promoted? The decision is obvious. So in that case, no need to use open method. You know, then we can save, you know, the organization will be able to save uh, the time, effort, and money by using the close method. Okay, but in case of a very large organization, where there are, uh, you know, there are at least, uh, if not many, 
a considerable number of qualified people who are interested in the promotion. Uh, then it's better to follow open method. So in that way, you can reduce the number of complaints. The criteria of promotions then, right? In order to give promotions, there must be criteria. So they are the factors that we have to consider in order to decide the suitability of the person, suitability of the candidate for the promotion. Without criteria, we can't give promotions. These criteria we can divide into two categories, such as informal criteria and formal criteria. So what are the informal criteria? Basically, there are three, personal influence, political influence, and personal liking. Personal influence, political influence, and personal liking. Political influence, you know, that may be national, that may be um, domestic, domestic, internal. Then personal liking, you know, decision, decision maker may have a special personal liking to someone. Also personal disliking to another one. Okay, I think you can understand. So according to ideal HRM, informal criteria should not be used. But uh, as far as uh, Sri Lankan cases are concerned, according to my observations and understanding, there were many cases where informal criteria were used, you know, when giving promotions. That's a pathetic situation. So I don't like to talk uh, more about that, even though I have many examples in my mind, which I observed, which I understood, which I noticed. So that's why Sri Lanka is like this. Then the formal criteria. So ideally, we have to consider formal criteria. So basically, there are two uh, main criteria or sub-criteria under formal criteria. First one is seniority. The second one is merit. So you know seniority. What is seniority? Basically, it is the length of time that particular employee has served for the organization. So the generally, it implies working experience of the employee within that particular organization in which an attempt is made, is being made to fill the vacancy. And there are several aspects or forms of seniority, job seniority, department seniority, organizational seniority. So if you have, I have given an example to increase your understanding about these uh, three types. So if you have questions, you can raise, you know, no problems. So then, right. <clears throat> uh, if we use seniority as a criterion or as the criterion, as the criterion for giving promotions, there are advantages. First one is, according to my writing, the first one is, it is an objective means of differentiating one employee from other employees. Not like merit, you know, an objective means of differentiating. So if you know the date of appointment, usually, when we calculate seniority, we use the date of appointment of the particular employee. So if we know the date, dates of employees, then it is easy to prepare a list of employees in terms of seniority. So normally a good organization, you know, does preparing that list and also from time to time uh, does uh, updating that list of employees in terms of or according to seniority. So then based on seniority, so we can give promotions. Then it is certain, you know, measuring counting is easy. We don't use, you know, uh, unambiguous criteria. We, we don't use several criteria in order to calculate the seniority. Also, it is not biased. You know, he, you know the, the, the seniority doesn't depend on favors or the biases or the values of the decision makers. Who are supposed to calculate that seniority. So therefore it is not biased. But if you take the second criterion, merit, it may be biased because it is subject to many judgment. Also, uh, and favoritism of evaluators. Normally, wherever there are people, you know, it is believed that there is favoritism. 
there is favoritism especially countries like sri lanka so therefore the managerial judgment has to be made in order to decide the merit of the relevant employees who had or who have applied for the uh, promotion so therefore it is uh, biased but you know the seniority is not biased of course if you seriously accurately calculate merit then we can minimize the bias but totally total eradication of bias is not practical then it ma matches with our culture normally we, in, in our culture we have a value that is that adultness you know is considered as important in life so therefore treating adults is a value of our culture the usually the most senior person from a group of employees who have applied for the promotion is the person you know who is the eldest usually usually it may not be it may not be but usually the longer service go to number 5 advantage numbered 5 longer service is dedication of the employee to the organization so therefore there must be something for this longer service for this dedication of the employee to the organization maybe there are excellent employees who had chances of leaving the organization and joining better organizations even competitors but i assume such employees did not because of the dedication of the you know dedication of such employees to the organization therefore as a gift you know as a gift for that a uh, dedication gift so we have to consider seniority right it is easy to understand and implement but go to merit you know it's difficult because we have to develop a good performance evaluation system to evaluate the merit of the person that is usually defined as the degree of efficiency and degree of effectiveness of the employee so it is not easy to calculate the degree of effectiveness and the degree of uh efficiency of the employee but of course it is possible accurately we can do that but a rigorous effort is needed an objective effort is needed but such a thing is not needed when it comes to uh, seniority okay so then when seniority is respected turnover of senior employees will reduce also unions often prefer seniority to merit so then it likes to improve labor management relationship however there are disadvantages there are two major disadvantages the first one is this the question of whether the most senior person is the most competent person to do the job or that question arises he or she may not be so according to professor tripathi the oldest is not always the ablest not always maybe the ablest but not or may not be so there may be employees who are more competent and better than the oldest employee or the most senior employee then second uh this advantage when we give promotions based on seniority then you know Uh, the then what will happen to the motivation of new and young employees the answer is definite or that is negative you know when employees get qualified for better jobs automatically by accumulating seniority so it is more likely that even we can say rather than use it more likely definitely also we can use definitely new and young employees you know they will get demotivated they may have a less tendency to improve their job performance that is another you know big disadvantage if we use only seniority when giving promotions then turnover of younger what will happen so that will get increased right then another disadvantage when promotion when we give promotions based on seniority incompetent individuals may be promoted longer service does not result in 
more competence necessarily okay so there is a concept called you know so according to professor hojets peter principle what is this which holds that people rise to their level of incompetence no you know it is it is possible that a certain employee can rise to his so her level of incompetence if we give promotions based on seniority but this is a cause of managerial obsolescence you know not not uh, i mean updating managerial obsolescence so use of seniority might result in promoting employees to positions for which they are unqualified so in fact there are many examples in sri lanka you know uh, which we can observe this peter principle right so then i am not going to discuss the merit so you can to certain extent already i have discussed the advantages of uh, seniority usually will become disadvantages of merit and advantage disadvantages of seniority will become advantages of merit the most important thing is the productivity you know the, definitely the merit you know results in increasing productivity increase in profits and profitability okay right so then <clears throat> so normally excellent employees in terms of performance are considered for giving promotions seniority matters of course merit also matters then seniority look at this example then the question is who should be promoted so there's a lady here there is a female employee here there's a male employee a very all employee you know he has served for the company for 33 years yes i have been with the company 33 years this girl has served for only 3 years i have been with the company 3 years so therefore in terms of seniority this person is you know is 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 i mean is higher the more senior person is this person not this one and this is also sales manager this is also sales many then sales last year uh dollar 12 million but this one only 1 million then increase sales by 62% in 2 years but with regard to this person says declined by 40% in 2 years then who should be promoted so here here if we consider seniority willingly or unwillingly we have to promote this person not this one but if you consider merit uh, what is merit merit includes increase sales and the sales value not the number of years served uh, that is included under seniority so that comes you know number of years uh, that comes under seniority that number comes under seniority okay so there are for two answers depending on the criterion that we are going to select so in fact for an ideal uh, situation what should we do ideally we should consider both seniority and merit why the answer is clear each has advantages and disadvantages so therefore we are supposed to use a combination of merit and seniority if we do that theoretically we will be able to minimize disadvantages of both criteria and maximize advantages of both criteria all right okay so then uh, then we have to give certain marks for seniority and certain marks for merit 50% or some companies they give 30% for seniority out of 100 then 70% 70 marks for merit then if that is the policy then definitely this lady is going to be promoted 
this female employee is going to be promoted, not this one. So normally, many private companies who are facing a severe competition, they are highly concerned with merit. So therefore, uh, for such organizations, then this person, it is more likely that this female sales manager is going to be promoted. Okay, then, <clears throat> right, then this is, you know, one policy, a sound policy, I can present the below mentioned recommendations in giving promotions. When there is only one promotion opportunity, first, most senior person we have to consider. Then we have to evaluate the merit of that person. If the person, if we are sure that the employee will be able to perform the duties of the job successfully, uh, then we can promote that most senior person. So in many ways, you know, most of the possible problems we can avoid if we follow this one. But unfortunately, assume the most senior person is not the most ablest one. And that person is really not qualified to perform the jobs, sorry, the duties of the job successfully. And then we can't promote that most senior person. Then we have to consider the next senior person. Then we have to evaluate his or her merit. If that person becomes eligible in terms of merit, uh, then we have to decide to promote the next senior person then the reasons for our decision will have to be communicated to all the relevant people in order to avoid you know, prospective or future complaints, misunderstanding. Okay, then a minimum seniority, another guideline, a minimum seniority should be required in order to apply for consideration of promotions to higher jobs. For example, to become a university professor, a minimum of uh, 15 years of serving as an academic you know, is needed. So likewise, to become general manager of the organization, a minimum of 10 years, you know, a minimum seniority we can have. Okay, then in case we are both employees who are being considered, assume there are two employees, you know, uh, we are considering for the promotion, when one promotion opportunity is available, so assume that you know, both employees have the same degree of seniority, uh, then what will be the decisive factor? That is merit. If they are equivalent in terms of merit, but which usually doesn't happen, it doesn't happen usually, but anyway, assume there are two employees who are the same in terms of merit, uh, then the decisive factor will be seniority. If we include, you know, qualifications under merit, it is possible that we can have two employees who have the same qualifications. Uh, then we, the decisive factor will be seniority. But normally when it comes to efficiency and effectiveness of job performance, two people usually don't become the same. Right, now the next uh, learning unit, counting seniority. How do we count seniority? Now you understood that seniority has to be considered when giving promotion. Also merit has to be considered when giving promotions. Right, then how do you calculate or count seniority? Previously I mentioned simply based on the rate of appointment to the job. The rate of appointment to the job we can consider. However, you know, there are problems you know, with regard to counting seniority in some special occasions or events, what are they? Try to understand the first one. Since when date should seniority be counted in case of a certain job or job class or job grade? Si sorry, sorry. Since what date should seniority be counted? Of course, usually the answer is this the effective date of appointment to that job or job grade or job class, right. Go to second one. 
when two or more employees had been appointed to positions of a certain job on the same day, how should their seniority be determined? Is it practical? You know, assume 10 people, you know, 10 people were hired, appointed. Is it practical? Of course. In the government sector, of course, when I was appointed to the Sri Lanka administrative service, if my memory is correct, on the same date, 37 people were appointed. When I was appointed to Sri Lanka Educational Administrative Service, 111, 112, yes. I think my memory is correct. 112, you know, uh, uh, candidates or new as new employees were selected and appointed on the same date, on the same day. So I can remember recently, you know, I was invited to deliver uh, a certain lecture to a group of, uh, you know, newly hired management trainees by Bank of Sri Lanka. So if my memory is correct, uh, you know, on the same date, 320, you know, fresh graduates were hired as management trainee on the same date. Now there's a question, you know, how to determine seniority? because the effective date of appointment of all these employees is the same. Uh, within bracket, I have given a usual uh, solution. According to the descending order of their merit, they showed total points they obtained at the time of selection. At the time of selection. So as far as I am concerned, you know, with regard to that, what is this Sri Lanka Education Administrative Service? So according to Marx, According to Marx, you know, I was the, you know, I was the, I was the fourth place. So I got the fourth place out of 112 people. Uh, then in terms of seniority then, so I am the fourth, I am the fourth. So likewise, you know, we can consider marks obtained by the relevant candidates during the selection. So according to Marx, then we can, you know, prepare an order. Right. Then, third situation, in case where more than one employee had been promoted to positions of a certain job on the, uh, this is about promotions. Earlier one is appointing, new appointments. Then considering the date of joining the organization as an employee. So we can consider that as the basis for counting seniority. Okay, then when an employee who had been, when an employee who had been terminated, Due to the reasons such as resignation, vacation, or dismission. You know? So as you was rehired, normally, normally a dismissed employee is not hired again. But especially in government sector organizations, this is possible. This is pos possible. Or even vacated, you know, some people, you know, they don't inform uh, about their absence for two or three days then the company can consider, you know, such an employee as vacated from the post. Then that employee is going to be terminated because of that. So as soon later, you know, there were genuine reasons and all these then acceptable to the management. And then the management, the top management, assume decides to rehire. And then are you going to consider previous service of this employee for the organization? Usually not. Usually not. So on the date of reappointment, you know, the, 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 the date of reappointment is considered for calculating the seniority. Also, in, in practice, there are other situations also. Generally, calculating seniority is relatively easy compared with, uh, you know, evaluating merit or determining merit. But in some cases, now it is, uh, dear graduate students, you know, it is thundering. Seriously, I don't know whether I will be able to continue. I uh, positively, I look at this. I hope I will be able to. I don't know about you. Uh, right, going abroad for education or training. Uh, that's another situation then extension of the probation period. So assume 
there was there was one year as the probation period but the relevant employee could not meet the uh, relevant requirements then an an extension was given to that employee assume for another year then are you going to consider you know uh, that that extension also for the seniority or are you going to ignore that extension period for the seniority a policy decision has to be made then no problem by considering you know the, the merits and demerits you know we have to make a policy decision then no problem demotion as a punishment are we going to consider then is temporary stoppage of employment intermittently so in case of layoff are we going to consider maybe temporary stoppage is for only 3 months or 6 months right okay then uh, special problems arising from promotions so normally normally in order to achieve so all these you know object all these objectives briefly i mentioned are these things we give promotions organizations do giving promotions but unfortunately because of giving promotions also organizations you know will get disadvantages or problems so what are they some of the problems we are going to learn some of the problems special problems one is first one is frustrated employees assume there are five employees who had applied but only one person was promoted then the other four people definitely are going to frustrate or have already become frustrated is it possible to avoid this situation generally not possible because everyone cannot be promoted especially you know there are in an organization there are vacancies which are card restricted there are vacancies which are non card restricted are there no problem person to person basis job holder to hold basis we can promote so now for example university academics when an assistant lecturer you know joins the organization the university the state university that assistant lecturer has the opportunities to be promoted to senior professor senior professor that means from assistant lecturer to then the lecturer probationary then senior lecturer grade 2 then senior lecturer grade 1 then associate professor then pro full professor and then senior professor it is possible so there are such jobs even in you know in in especially public organizations public organizations so such promotions are quasi promotions maybe maybe promo maybe quasi may not be but usually non card restricted non card they are not usually definitely they are non card restricted but you know the job of uh, general manager the job of human resource manager as if there is only one job called human resource manager only one job called finance manager in the organization are uh, those jobs then hard restricted assume you are an assistant finance manager your boss is the finance manager your boss has another 5 years to get retired assume the boss has no intention of leaving the organization then you have to wait until your boss gets retired you know that that uh, or oh, or oh, until that boss you know gets you know i mean becomes uh, incapable of performing the job further due to an accident of course the organization doesn't wish such things but anyway so the you have to wait uh, that is card restricted so you have to wait until the current job hold leaves or the current job hold retires or the yes right frustrated employees one it's uh, one you know strategy to have, to to reduce the degree of frustrated employees we may not be able to more, more likely we, we are not able to eradicate frustrated employees the number of you know we but we can minimize the number how one strategy is we can develop a very objective promotion scheme then people you know 
can uh, will be able to do a self evaluation whether they are suitable or not for the promotion whether they are going to be selected or not selected or not okay so then uh, right then if they understand that you know they will not be able to get the required marks you know of the scheme or uh, then they will decide if they are intelligent they will decide not to apply in that way we can reduce the number of uh, frustrated employees okay then the second problem jealousy or resentment towards employees who got the promotion jealousy is a serious vice been suffered by people they they may be intelligent people you know so they they may be serpents they may be not not serpents they may be intelligent definitely serpents and barbarians type people you know they are suffering from jealousy not only jealousy but also reprobation retaliation anger you know, these things are their hostility so that especially uh, this is a big problem in sri lanka countries like sri lanka so many people are suffering from this vice jealousy so therefore jealousy or resentment towards employees who got the promotions so one one uh, yes again the one strategy is to have a very objective promotion scheme then if people can understand that the the, the promoter assume there is only one vacancy then one person you know was promoted as well. there was one only one vacancy one person was promoted if majority of people understand that that person is the right person that person is the best person the most suitable person for the promotion because of the objective promotion is king then hopefully the dig you know the number of people who are suffering from vice we can reduce another one is counseling you know so we can sympathize and empathize you know these people you know who are suffering from jealousy or into uh or into the fact that they were not promoted and uh, then we can help them okay these are the qualification that you have to acquire in order to get promotion in order to get the promotion or the promotions and then we can advise even you you have certain weaknesses with regard to your performance and please follow these things in order to avoid those weaknesses no kind of counseling can be given or uh, that is another solution so here in fact you know some counseling you know i have uh, mentioned here some counseling not the objective scheme yes here i have mentioned but that is applicable to this one also okay what i mentioned previously that is correct okay because i i am not teaching you know by memorizing so therefore so even some sometimes you know i don't follow what i have written here simply i use my memory my experience right then not accepting the authority not accepting the authority now that's another special problem assume you know there were 10 people there were 10 people who had applied for the promotion assume you, you only you you know were promoted and then you know uh, you were promoted now you have to work as the uh, superior to those nine people those nine people then are they going to accept you as their boss are they going to you know accept you as their leader a question arises a problem arises because of previous acquaintance previous friendship because of jealousy you know so these are of course the reasons for this behavior not accepting the authority of the person who was promoted then counseling is one solution the later we can use discipline discipline another solution is that the peer can be promoted by giving a transfer also to a different group so that means you are going, you know 
you are you are going to be promoted not to the people of you know ps you know who who associate who, who associated with you some of you are friends assume so some of them sorry some of them are friends to you you are promoted with a transfer to another group another group so in that group you don't have friends in in that group you don't have previous you know association or acquaintance then hopefully you will be able to surprise them in the ideal way in the expected way hopefully subordinates are going to respect you accept you as their leader then not releasing the employee that's another problem this problem is called holding assume i am your superior assume you are an outstanding employee then top management decided to give a promotion to you no longer you know you are under me now you have to go to another department by accepting that promotion you know which i don't like and i i don't allow why no assume major reason is that you are leaving will really hamper the productivity of my department you are leaving will give a serious disturbance barrier to my perform and then i don't like to see you are leaving from my department to another department i want to stop you i want to keep you within me but i assume there is no possibility of keeping you because you have come to my level loss because of merit and then there are, you know we cannot have two bosses for the same department as so i am the departmental manager there's only one you know position for the job of departmental manager you know either i should be promoted to a higher level and then you can be promoted to my department as you know the, the head of the department otherwise assume uh, you know uh, there is no chance for me to be promoted still i i am remaining as the head of the department but you know you you were better than me or almost you are similar to me in terms of merit not not in terms of seniority but in terms of merit and because of the uh, company policy of promotion which considers both merit and promotion assume the top management decided to promote you then no longer i can keep you but if i am going to keep you further under my department and then that is called hoarding how to avoid this hoarding so one strategy is you know this one to give rewards to superior for development of subordinates subordinates development can be considered when superior's performance evaluation is done also a proper training to supervisors is another good solution to prevent this type of pro uh, problem so under this proper training is important to you know draw the attention of the uh, of this manager to one principle big principle what is that so that is called you know uh, have you heard I, of course you must have learned about uh, classic you know 14 principles introduced by henry feuer 14 principles one four 14 principles introduced by henry feuer from the 14 principles of management one principle is this organizational objectives are superior to departmental objectives and job objectives departmental objectives and the job objectives are subordinate to organizational objectives so therefore when there's a conflict between your job objectives and organizational objectives priority has to be given to organizational objectives therefore being the superior to you i should understand that you were promoted to achieve organizational goals rather than goals of my department therefore i have to bear i have to tolerate that for betterment you know the management decided to promote you another thing is of course you know if you are a serious employee unmatched employee and unmatched employee 
I must be able to train another person like you. Or the relevant HR department is responsible for that. Then I should not wait until, you know, I mean, normally, normally, you know, I assume I am a powerful uh, support, I am a powerful departmental manager. Then I keep you, I don't release you to uh, assume your, 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 your promotion in another department. Uh, then I will make a condition demand to the top management that is that uh, until a suitable person like you is sent to my department, I will not release you. A powerful superior can make that type of demand and order. So that depends on the power of the department to manage. Okay, possibly whether, you know, right. So, but anyway, you know, I have to understand that if I am going to keep you, you know, you are also not going to be happy now. Assume you, you badly, you need that promotion. Then you have a, you know, liking to leave this department, my department and work for that department, the new department. So therefore keeping you will demotivate you. That I have to understand as your boss. Okay, so likewise, you know, these things come under that proper training, even though I have not specified such things in this writing. Okay, then refusing the promotion, that's another problem. Assume I promoted you, I'm the top manager. I promoted you, but, you know, with the promotion, you came to see me and then telling, you know, uh, sir, sorry, sir, you know, thank you very much for promoting me to that post, but I have some personal problems. So at this moment, I'm not, you know, able uh, to, you know, accept. I'm not in a position of accepting that promotion. And then that's, you know, there are some employees, you know. And then one solution is, you know, to follow that open method instead of closed method. Refu refusing promotion, you know, can occur uh, mainly if you follow the first way of promoting. Uh, that is by management decisions, close method. Can you remember the close method? So therefore, we can use open method. Then only we consider people who have applied for the promotion. Applying means that the person has an interest in getting the promotion. Therefore, those who don't have an interest in getting the promotion, they don't become applicants under open method. Okay, right. Then limited opportunities, that's the sixth uh, special problem because of promotions. So I mentioned earlier about, uh, what is this, uh, quasi promotions. So therefore we can develop promotion opportunities. Uh, re remember all the quasi promotions are not, you know, card, uh, non card restricted opportunities. So what is a quasi promotion? Normally a quasi promotion is a promotion which doesn't have new duties, new responsibilities, but which has a better pay and better title. Okay, which are non card restricted, right? Upgrading and upclass. Promotion opportunities for the job of personal secretary. Have a look. Assume you are here working as a junior secretary, and now there are four promotion opportunities. This is a career path for the job of personal secretary. So therefore, for every job, you know, we can develop a career path. So I can remember uh, about one of my consultancies. I was asked to develop a career path for every job available at that time in that organization. It was possible for me to develop, even for PN, even for uh, audit, you know, audit uh, officer at least five jobs or four jobs, four jobs, four, not, not four jobs, I'm sorry. Four positions, four promotion opportunities for the job of you know, secretary or personal second or executive. Right, okay, all right. Any questions? Right, then uh, promotion is came now. So normally, ideal HRM suggests to develop a promotion scheme. 
then you can avoid many problems. A promotion scheme is a program, you know, or it is a system that has been developed for giving promotions to employees. With regard to a particular job, maybe, or with regard to several jobs, or a particular category of jobs, like top managers, middle managers, or executives, or all categories of jobs available within the organization. There may be several promotion schemes there, or one mega, you know, big promotion scheme, master promotion scheme. That is also possible. Right. A good promotion scheme should consist of these things. Introduction, objectives, object, objectives, you know, the, the targets that we are going to achieve by giving promotions. Then policies usually include principles that we are going to follow when giving promotions, then promotion opportunities, career paths, then criteria and the procedures. Okay, all right. So normally HR manages responsible for developing a promotion scheme as well as implementing a promotion scheme. But in developing, the support of other staff managers and light managers can be obtained, no problem. And also when it comes to successful implementation also, all the managers should uh, contribute. Well, this is an example, a typical promotion scheme for first line management. So in fact, uh, this was an actual promotion scheme that I developed for one company, one uh, public enterprise, yes, many years ago. Introduction, this is this only for first line management. Of course, there was another scheme for middle management. There was another scheme for top management. There was another scheme for uh, non-manager employees. Okay, so you can see introduction. There are the objectives. You can see, you know, seven objectives have been mentioned. Please take time, be serious, and then try to read and then understand. Then the policy, you know, promote from within policy. It's the general policy of the bank. Of course, for entry level jobs, we have to follow, you know, uh, external recruitment. But for other jobs, we can follow internal recruitment. So normally, <clears throat> promote from within policy, you know, normally, if there's a suitable internal person, then we have to consider that person for the promotion. If there is no suitable employee within the organization, then of course, we have to go to an outside. So these are principles or guidelines from one to four. Then these are the promotion opportunities. Assistant executive, executive two, executive one, senior executive two and senior executive one. Entry level job, maybe trainee executive or assistant executive. Then criteria that you can see, you know, from assistant executive to executive two, seniority, minimum of two years as assistant executive. Then merit, obtaining average marks between 70 and 100 for the perform and evaluation for the past years served for the bank. So likewise, you can understand. In some cases, you know, there may be a requirement of getting a certain qualification, banking qualification, or perhaps when we do perform an evaluation, educational qualification also we consider and then we can give marks. Okay, so right. But here, you know, there are three criteria you can see from senior executive two to senior executive one. The highest post in the first line management, that is senior executive. There are three requirements, three criteria. Seniority, then merit, and then a minimum of C standard required for the criterion of manager expertise in the, or expertise in the performance evaluation. So maybe, you know, uh, there's a requirement of getting a diploma at least in management or a degree in management or postgraduate qualification in management, right? But normally for first line management, a degree, something like 
for middle management a post graduate degree right this is the procedure for promotions first line manager positions are non you know not card restricted or non card restricted and therefore any executive who meets the above criteria and requirements you know has the permission or has the right of submitting that's the meaning of here may submit a report indicating the post job for which promotion is expected and suitability for the promotion to the head of the department concerned and likewise then the head of the department has to activate then the relevant committee and then the agf uh, assistant general manager human resources because that was a, a big organization there's a post called assistant general manager human resources right okay all right any questions the time is 2:36 right okay now transfers uh, that is uh, that is not an upward movement it is a horizontal movement from one job to another job or one place to another place or from one time to another time or from office to field or vice versa from field to office okay all right so then transfers yes you may have because of a transfer you may have a new office or you don't have a new office same office but you know uh, from from general clerk to uh, specialized clerk you know you were transferred from general clerk to specialized uh, clerk within the same office now that is possible that is possible then the same office you don't have a new office or from uh, yes then are transfers necessary an important question are transfers necessary the answer is you know okay assume assume okay according to theory of hrm there is something called a transfer so therefore we have to you know create transfers and then we have to give transfers and then we have to manage transfers you know? because of the theory we should not do that also because that assume because of the fact that there are organizations or including competitors they give transfers they manage transfers and then we also should do we should not follow so therefore on an imitation basis we should not give transfers we should give transfers on the needs of the organization if there are genuine needs of the organization which will necessitate okay this is c oh yes which will which will you know, i mean which will make transfers essential uh, then we have necessitate no right so okay, don't worry about my my pronouncing sometimes you know i make mistakes in pronouncing don't worry because of tiredness uh generally transfers can be okay right all right so therefore transfers are not necessary are not indispensable then what are these business needs but what are these you know uh, real business needs for transfers uh, that uh, you know you should know maybe you have learned previously for your bachelor's degree if you have done uh, hrm formally the one big disadvantage you know there is transfers may discourage specialization so there may be no opportunity for specialization because of transfers also because of transfers you know some employees may get personal problems they will not have uh, an opportunity of you know uh, settling down in a certain place geographical place in the country because of transfers they will have to you know uh, staying in rented houses or in houses provided by the organization not in his or her own house that is possible because of transfers which you know some employees don't like okay right now tell me 
the reasons for transfers under subheading you no know, types of transfers so in fact types of transfers mean reasons for transfers so each type gives a significant reason main reason take first one productive transfers so here you know so in the same organization okay there is a surplus of employees in one department there's a shortage of employees in another department okay so assume uh, our department is administration department which has a surplus of employees assume there are th uh, three drivers which are not needed which are in excess who who are in excess there are three you know drivers the post uh, sorry the uh, we call the let me say there are three uh, drivers you know who are in excess who are not needed who are not needed are uh, then then what should we do with these uh, three drivers we can terminate them or we can what we call is we can retrench them we can re re retrench them uh, that's called retrenchment we can make them jobless and we can terminate them because no longer they are needed for the organization instead of that instead of that we can you know ask them to get a transfer to the production department where there's a you know shortage of employees so assume that these uh, drivers you know they like to get a transfer from administration department to the production department they also don't like to get that retrenchment they still want to work for the organization but not as drivers but as production employees and assume uh, the relevant uh, training is given to them those employees and then those employees are promoted from an administration department to the production department or such promotions are called productive transfers so they are given to you know maintain the productivity or stop uh, declining productivity then vacant transfers you can understand please read them you know i am not going to use this time which is very limited the shift transfers you know from general shift to continuous shift from night shift to uh, morning shift likewise we can you know then versatility transfer well, what do you, what do you mean by versatility so it means you know if you are versatile you have the capability of performing different tasks different duties even several jobs you know a versatile university teacher you know can teach several subjects several subjects versatility so therefore normally you know when we use that technique what is called job rotation which is a job redesigning technique and also which is a training technique so because of uh, you know if you want to increase the versatility of employees then we can give we can use that job rotation technique so that we will be able to give versatility transfers okay discipline oriented transfers policy or as a policy you know in sri lanka army or in uh, even when i was appointed to sri lanka administrative service in my letter of appointment there was a condition you know for for first 3 years i had to serve in a rural area i had to serve in a rural area then after that you know i will become eligible uh, to to uh, ask for a transfer but giving a transfer is not guarantee even after serving for 3 years but i will become eligible you know to get a transfer from the place where i am working and then to the place in which i am interested right then interested oriented transfers that as a, this is a policy you know remember there's a difference between policy oriented transfers and interest oriented transfers look at this example you know mrs madhu is working in kalam she wants to be with her husband who is working in dabul madhu can be transferred from kalam to dabul for her interest so normally these transfers you know policy oriented transfers and other transfers are done 
for the interest of the organization, for the interest of the business. But this one is done for the interest of the uh, employee to maintain the motivation of the employee, to increase the motivation of the employee, to have a balance between work life and family life of the employee. To ask it for that. But this one, you know, as a policy, you have to say. In Sri Lanka, I, mean, I can remember there was a time, right, when, when a so soldier, you know, a new soldier was hired. Then that soldier had to serve for six months at least in an operation area. That's a policy. It is compulsory. Right, then conflict oriented, more machine transfer. So, likewise. Okay, then go to this one. Employer's right of transfers now. You know, my question is is it possible for the top management to transfer any employees at any time? Usually it is possible, but there are limitations. There are limitations. There are no labor laws in Sri Lanka limiting the right of transfers enjoyed by or possessed by the employer. Normally the employer has that right. What is that right? The right of transferring any employee to, to, to a place where the employer wishes, wants to. So therefore there are no you know, labor laws limiting that right. But anyway, there are case labor laws. Sri Lankan case law you know, provides some provisions to be followed by the employer when, when giving transfers. One major one is this. The employer's right to transfer an employee is subject to the following limitation. So these are the limitations. It should not be contrary to the contract or terms of employment. So one important thing is, you know, categorical mentioning in the letter of appointment. Categorically, categorical mentioning of transferability in the letter of appointment. If that is there, then it is possible to transfer that employee, you know. But if it is not, then there will be a problem. The right of the employer gets limited. That's why normally, you know, it is recommended that when we give a letter of appointment, the human resource manager should make sure that the condition of transferability is included in the letter of appointment. Categorically, specially, we have to specify that. The transfer must not be malafide. You know, malafide day, pronouncing maybe there are two ways of pronouncing malafide or malafide day. It's okay, don't worry about pronouncing. <clears throat> We are Sri Lankan, this is Sri Lanka. As long as we give the meaning, the other gets the meaning that I want that person to get, then no problem. But if that person, the, if you don't get the, the meaning that I want you to have, uh, then there's a problem. Then we must be serious about pronouncing all these things. Right, the, the transfer must not be malafide. It should be bona fide, that means bona fide or bona fide day. In simple, uh, with an honest intention, we have to give a transfer. Not with, with, with a malicious, with a dishonest intention. There's no implied condition of service that an employee can be transferred to a new consent commenced by the employee. Subsequent to the date of the employee's recruitment. Assume you were hired by the organization three years ago. In the last year, new company was hired. It's not, not hired. New company was purchased by, my, by our company. Uh, then is it possible for the management to transfer you from, so, you know, from, from the car, current place to this new subsidiary or new company? There's no implied condition for that transferring. If, you know, if there is a special mention in the letter of appointment, it is possible usually. Right, an employee cannot be transferred from one employee to another, yes. 
the transfer must not involve a change in the condition of service. You know, it should not be perceived by the employee as a demotion. And also, because of the transfer, if there is a reduction to the salary, then there will be a problem. The employee can go to the court. You know, but if there are genuine reasons which uh, the, you know, the employee can accept, then okay, no problem. Right? All right, then although an employer has an inherent right to transfer an employee, it must be made bona fide. Okay, so likewise, uh, these things you can read, no problem. A verbal order of transfer is usually not a lawful order. Remember that also? Right. Now the elements of the function of transfers, you know. So here, you know, I'm going to talk uh, about the things that we should include when we develop a scheme for a transfer. We have to have a good scheme for transfers. Otherwise, a lot of problems. One is transfer objectives, you know. What are the objectives that we are going to achieve by giving transfer? We must be very clear. And then we have to establish the transferable ways, you know. The jobs to which we can give transfers are those jobs, you know, we have to specify clearly. Then criteria for transfers. Are we going to consider merit when giving transfer? Seniority, usually seniority is considered. You know, for some places, there's a demand, high demand to get transfers. For some places, there's no demand, perhaps no demand at all. Some places, you know, where difficulties are there, so like the relevant payments. You know, so I assume the employee has to go because of the transfer. You know, now, uh, you know, I mean, for, has to travel by using, you know, the various tools, equipment and other things. Then it is good for the company, you know, to bear that cost. Relevant payments. If you know, if we transfer an employee to a very difficult area, uh, then we can give a special allowance. You know, that also can be decided. A special allowance to meet, to motivate the person. Then authority of deciding transfers. Uh, that's this is very important. In the organization, legitimately, who has the right to transfer employees? Uh, this has to be de decided in terms of a policy, policy statement. Okay, initiating transfers is one thing, approving transfers is another thing. So usually approving transfers is decentralized or centralized. Think, approving transfer, authority for approving transfers is centralized. Authority for initiating transfers is decentralized. Why? You can understand. If you can't understand, you can ask questions. Then communication. Then formality. Of course, there, you know, policy proceed, all these, you know, should be there. Right. Verbally, we should not do, we should not manage transfers. Very dangerous. Right. Oh, all right. Then uh, before getting uh, the break, now I want to draw your attention to discussion of two applications. Okay, let us go to this one. Both applications are through applications in Sri Lanka, happened in Sri Lanka. So dear graduate students, now read this one, try to understand and do an analysis, which is acceptable, which is educate.
Okay, so there was a class, you know, Mr. Kulasekara, who are the stakeholders, you know, Mr. Kulasekara is, is one person. Uh, by profession, that person is a clerk, yes. His job is a clerk, grade one. Organization is a large corporation that produces building materials, yes. The corporation has a branch in Amradapura, yes, there is a, that has a, yes, that ha had a vacancy for a clerical employee. You know, the organization needed an experienced clerk, you know, for that branch, for that vacancy. So that was, you know, filling the vacancy had been a serious need. Then this HR department studied the staff requirements and found that the gold branch had an additional clerk. Then at the discussion between the top management and the branch, it was agreed to release one clerk. The branch in Gold had five clerks and there were, yes, three, three were at clerk, grade one level. Considering past job performance, seniority, the general attitude, the branch manager agreed to transfer Mr. Kulasekar, right? The Kulasekar got the letter of transfer, requiring him to report for work at Anuradhapura branch with effect from, yes. He made an appeal to cancel the transfer on grounds of ill health, unsettled conditions in the country at that time, you know, the economic problems, difficulties of travel and personal family problems, yes. Then he submitted a medical certificate and applied for leave from 1st to the 4th of December, stating that he was suffering from asthma. So according to terms and conditions of the employment of the corporation, a medical report from a government doctor is the requirement for medical aid. On 4th December, the corporation informed him to furnish a medical certificate from a government approved doctor, you know, if the cause of his continuous absence had been illness, yes. He failed to do what had been required. After an inquiry, the corporation decided that Mr. Kulasekar had failed to report for work, work upon an order of transfer without an acceptable excuse, had voluntarily vacated his post and had severed or severe, severed, severed means breached, broken his contract of employment. On 10th of February, 1980, he was dismissed with effect from Mr. Kulasekara filed a case before labor tribunal or tribunal against the corporation. LT. I hope uh, you understood normally, you know, to understand an application genuinely, thoroughly, you have to read three times. Questions, what problems do you think that the corporation has to face now? Is the order of transfer appropriate? Do you accept the decision of dismissal or not? Why? If you were the relevant manager of HRN, how would you have been dealt with the issues? Okay, any response? Okay, now what problems do you think that the corporation has to face? What are the problems? At least write down three problems. Can you do that? Three problems. Okay, first, first one, first problem, right. The corporation has to deal with one 
has to deal with now labor tribunal yes correct correct with the case with the case of lt this is one problem now that has to be settled then another one to fill the vacancy there's a serious there's a serious business need for filling this vacancy so without further delay that has to be filled to fill the vacancy that occurred after dismissing mr kulasekar there's another one now fill the okay and now i think there are two vacancies isn't it yes to fill the vacancy uh, this one uh, fill, to fill the vacancy for a clerical employee located in the branch of anuradhapur fill the you know vacancy for a clerical employee located in the branch of anuradhapur right? then sec, uh, third one is third one is again to fill to fill the vacancy not again filling again filling the filling a vacancy right to fill the vacancy that occurred after dismissing mr kulasekhar mr kulasekhar was dismissed now the his job was, became vacant i mean his position really the job is clerk grade 1 his position became vacant then third problem okay fourth one fourth one whether there's a sound you know whether whether there is a sound transfer policy transfer program or not Now that we have to consider whether sound sound you know uh, yes for sound transfer policy or good let, let me say good transfer for policy program really you know let let me give you a program program you know that has uh, an introduction that has objectives that has policy that has method all these things that has rules that has procedures so even a budget okay these are the you know problems that the corporation has to face the corporation has to deal with so therefore then how to deal with you should decide you should think and then you should decide that is the order of transfer appropriate of course for each one you know develop at least two alternatives there can be several alternatives even you know developing a good uh, poly, you know pro, uh, transfer not not f uh, transfer transfer a uh, program so we can develop two programs two programs then we can decide which one is better simply developing one program is not sufficient in practice always it is if the time permits if resources permit at least you know consider two alternatives ideally try to consider three then decide the best one out of the three then is the is the order of transfer appropriate a interesting an interesting question is the order of transfer appropriate yes of course yes of course reasons first reason there was a real business need second reason the hr department has studied the staff requirements and found that 
the gold branch had an additional clock gold branch had an additional clock that's another reason then third reason there was a discussion between the top management and the branch manager and the branch manager agreed to transfer mr kulasekar uh, that's the third reason that we can use to you know uh, justify our, our answer that is the order of transfer is appropriate then fourth reason just a letter containing the order of transfer that was given to mr kulasekar at the right time in the right way that communication right communication at the right time in the right way has happened so therefore by considering these four reasons the order of transfer is appropriate so remember if there's a genuine business need for transferring usually there is no excuse on the part of the employee but it should not be a malicious artificial constructive you know reason it should not be assume i want to retaliate from you then i create you know a malicious constructive reason you know for for transferring you uh, that is wrong because my intention is malafide or malafide fide okay then the third question do you accept the decision of dismissal or not now oh, we we have to know we are compelled to accept that the order of transfer is appropriate yes but then the another another decision the decision of dismissing the employee uh, is that right do you accept it and why i i'm expecting a response okay all right <clears throat> okay then let me give my response yes of course i agree with the decision of dismissal i agree with the decision of dismissal why remember that you know right okay reason why he engage in malingering how about this have you heard about malingering sorry when i then it is uh, time is going na okay right <clears throat> one reason he engage in malingery what is this malingery means you know genuinely you are not ill but you pretend that you are ill in order to avoid a legal order or managerial order uh, that is very bad you know your your illness is fake you are engaging you know uh, you know malingery means that genuinely you are not sick you can't decide that you are sick you know you can't decide normally there's a qualified person called medical doctor who can decide that in many cases the qualified doctor is right in very rare cases maybe the qualified doctor will not be able to find that you are genuinely ill so assume that genuinely you have an illness maybe a mental problem okay so therefore this kulasekara suffering from asthma maybe you know but it seems that you know uh, engage in malingering you know there was evidence that in order to avoid or refuse this order of transfer uh, he you know uh, i mean he he pretended that he was ill okay then second reason 
He did not submit the right medical report. He did not submit a right medical report from a government approved doctor. Uh, he failed to, you know, uh, give that. Uh, there is something, you know, maybe there is, there, because, you know, normally at that, you know, those days, you know, uh, doctors were very genuine, majority of doctors were very genuine and, you know, especially, uh, you know, engaged in government service. It's very harsh to get a medical certificate. You have, you know, you must produce, you know, genuine evidence. Genuinely, you must be ill and then you must have taken treatment from the doctor. So he did not submit, eh? not did submit. He did not submit. Then third reason, not respecting the order. Not respecting the order. This is called what? Insubordination. Insubo. Insubordination. This is also serious misconduct. Not respecting the order. If the order is right, you know, if the order was given after a right study, a sufficient study, and given by a right person, uh, then that has to be respected, that has to be accepted. That cannot be rejected. At, you know, uh, more, you know, at least, you know, he could have done this way. Kulasekara could have accepted the order and then could have, you know, gone to Anuradhapura and then could have appealed, you know, specifying his actual problem. Now, rather than, you know, dishonoring the order at the outset. This will really, you know, hurt, hurt the relevant manager and the relevant managers. Then more likely, so we can assume more likely the transferability, that condition has been categorically mentioned in the letter of appointment. So in the, you know, when I was reading the actual case, uh, the actual information about the actual case, I couldn't find that. But anyway, so we can assume that, you know, this is a large corporation. So we can assume that, that that categorical mentioning was in the letter of appointment. So therefore, considering these four reasons, you know, we have to accept the decision of this mission. I assume, you know, genuinely, so we can, we should, we, you know, we should really consider the human problems from the point of HRM, especially human resource manager. Then, you know, this, he, uh, he could have, you know, I mean, this Kulasekar could have met human resource manager. Then could have revealed, you know, the problems, you know, if uh, he was genuinely suffering from such problems and could have obtained a kind of, you know, consultation, kind of advice. Also, you know, being a, being, a, being a clerk. So if you were the relevant manager of HRM, how would you have been dealt with the issues? Of course, how do you do? Of course, you have to follow the theory of HRM, specifically the theory of transferring. Managing people, yes, the, especially the transfer, yes. You know, the, 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 another reason, you know, we can even, you know, the decision of dismissal, this is a serious case, you know, I mean, you know, one, one, one objective of punishing is, I think, can you remember the positive approach to punishing, not negative approach to punishing. You know, we want to deter others from similar action in future. Also, we want to make rules and regulations effective. Uh, those reasons also we can highlight to justify the decision of this mission. Okay, all right. Then <clears throat> I would have been dealt with the issues in the following way. First, you know, 
what you know what you what can you do we can have a discussion you know i mean if mr kolasekara is the right ah, that's you know if uh, you know we we have to make sure that we have to make sure that whether our choice is right or not there may be another person you know not not mr kolasekara there may be another person who has a willingness to go to anuradhapur are then what a chance you know if we can find that type of person and then give the transfer no problem at all you know that person is going to be further motivated because of that transfer that is going to be an employee interest oriented transfer so therefore we have first you know if i if i am the you know i i will study of course i will make a serious study then i will check whether there are people you know there's a person who has some willingness to get a transfer if there is no you know any employee or uh, then then we you know i will have to turn to mr kulasekar mr kulasekar right so then if you know he is genuinely unable to get a transfer uh, then you know why you know genuinely unable we we we, 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 we are not sure no i am not sure people you know a person can give many reasons for his or her defense then i have to you know i have to call the person in person but during corona time we can't do that maybe through the zoom right uh, this happened many many years ago no? right so then you know i can call the employee and then i can listen to the person the person has to reveal all the things with evidence not without evidence with evidence the person has to tell that you know person has to i mean has to prove that the per, you know he he is not in a position of accepting the transfer at this time or into personal problems or into health problems or into other problems then if it is really you know uh, if the employee is really genuine uh, then remember that you know no point of making the employee unhappy by transferring one one of the objectives of hrb is job satisfaction to maintain job satisfaction if possible to improve job satisfaction because of transferring if the employee is going to be dissatisfied and then this dissatisfied person of course will not produce the resource in the expected way will not perform the job in the expected day expected way there may be other, you know some other problems with regard to even customer source because of possible bad perform from on the part of mr kulasekar okay so then uh, why not you know rather than using close approach you know for this transfer uh, open close approach was used why not you know open approach open approach that's why you know uh, you know before before really the way va vacancy occurs you know that's why there is a function called human resource planning using proactive approach rather than reactive approach ideally we have to anticipate we have to anticipate the vacancy in the anuradhapur branch maybe uh, in two months early maybe you know in 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 advance of two months uh, then you know we will be able to do advertising then we will be able to select the right person for the vacancy when the when the vacancy actually occurs but in this organization that also has not been done the right human resource planning this is indeed the reactive approach after the problem occurred the management you know goes to solve the problem that is reactive approach right so why not you know uh, mr kula you know an attempt to you know counsel mr kula sekar like this you know mr kula sekar you know we considered many things and then you know the, the line manager and the other manager and myself assume you know i am the human resource manager you know we selected you 
uh, you know, as the right person. So then accept this uh, one and then go to Anuradhapura. And, you know, working, uh, working in Anuradhapura will be definitely a plus point for, for a future transfer. Sorry, future promotion. Future promotion. Something like, you know, counseling. He might, you know, he might accept. If the counseling works successfully, Ulasegra will accept the transfer. We'll go there. At least work for one year. Sacrificing, you know. If there's a very serious personal problem, you know, that prevents uh, this guy, you know, from, from this uh, Mr. Kulasekara from going to Anuradhapura, then, you know, that's not practical. So then we should not transfer. But I assume really uh, Mr. Kulasekara can manage personal problems, at least for a period of one year. Okay, something like, you know, you can, <clears throat> right. So my advice, you know, for future, you know, to, to avoid similar problems, develop a good transfer scheme so that nobody will be able to refuse. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Now, in this particular case, uh, I mean, they have not mentioned the transfer policy program uh, in this case. So can that be impacted negatively to the organization if the organization does not have a transfer policy and it can be impacted negatively when, when it comes to the labor tribunal? Correct. Uh, correct. Yes, correct. Yes. You know, if we have a good policy, if we have a good program, you know, always we can use that uh, in front of the court also in case of a course issue, you know, court issue. If there is no court issue, always, you know, working according to a scheme is good. That is called hard approach to a challenge. There is an approach called soft approach that has uh, at least two meanings. Uh, one meaning is, you know, we have to manage employees based on their emotions, good relationships. To, to a great or to a significant extent, we will be able to manage people by using relationships. Yes, without using policies, rules, regulation, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the procedures. However, you know, if the if uh, in case of a very large organization, and also you know the uh, there is a possibility for different managers to follow different policies, different procedures, then confusing, you know you know, hurting the uniformity, hurting the consistency, and then it is better to have, you know, that hard approach. We can develop the schemes according to which we can manage. According to that famous, you know, professor of uh, organizational sociology, the Max Weber, the functionalism, I think you can remember the functionalism. You know, people will come, people will leave. But there must be systems. Here the systems mean uh, programs, especially when it comes to managing human resources. We must have programs for transferring, for promoting, for terminating, for selecting, for doing performance evaluation. So according to which we have to manage. There are a lot of problems, yes, we can minimize, we can avoid. And that will enhance the professionalism not only uh, avoiding future problems. Right. So then uh, <clears throat> let us have a break now. Ethical also. That is not, uh, that may not be legal also. Right. Then the decision of, you know, transferring. You know, uh, transfer. Normally, okay, let me <clears throat> write. I do not agree with the decision of transferring. Why? Reason one. Okay, so I am giving. <clears throat> Reason one, the decision of outsourcing was done by the management. Decision of outsourcing was done by the management. Then the management is responsible for the well-being of Mr. Kama. Then second reason, the job, this job, as I mentioned, 
previously has. This job is a specialized one. He was hired owing to hit his right expertise of purchasing. Then third reason, the clause in the letter of appointment that is in earlier that the employee should carry out all the duties entrusted to him does not allow, does not allow the company to exploit the labor. The employer, that is the company, has the prerogative to transfer employees, but this has to be exercised in a just and fair manner and not according to the whims and fancies of individuals. Here, top managers whims and fancies of individuals. So if you go to um, uh, the part, you know, uh, I think in my note, I have mentioned those things. Please go to that part under the subtitle, employer's right of transfers. Okay, so there is a, there is a legal case, you know, Ceylon Mercantile Union versus Miller's Limited. So according to the judgment given by the judge, you can't, you know, you can't exploit employees. Also, you can't, you know, trans, you know, you can't transfer employees according to the whims and fancies of individuals. Right, then uh, that is, that was third reason. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to write, you know, because of uh, time limitation. Right, then the th third reason that I'm using to, you know, my decision that is to agree with the decision of trans, uh, you know, uh, do, i uh, sorry, disagree with the decision of transfer. What, what, what is, okay, well, the decision, decision of purchasing I mentioned, I don't agree with that. Also decision of transferring also, I don't agree with that. So therefore now I'm telling reasons. The first reason is what? The degree of outsourcing was done by the management. So therefore the management is responsible for the well-being of Mr. Kama, especially from the point of HR. Then the job is a specialized one. That's a second reason. So Mr. Kamal was hired according to his right expertise of purchasing. Then the third reason are that close. So therefore simply, you know, having that type of clause, you know, uh, does not allow the company to exploit the label. Of course, the prerogative is there on the part of the employee. What is the prerogative? Transferring any employee. But anyway, that has to be utilized in a just and fair manner. So in this case, you know, uh, Mr. Kamal was transferred, not in just and fair manner. So it seems that it, uh, he was transferred according to whims and fancies of individuals. Then the fourth reason for not agreeing with the decision of transfer, he was transferred to a job that he was, you know, he, he may not be competent, for which, you know, he may not be competent to perform. He, he assume, you know, he can perform the job, the new job, he will be able to perform. No, but he is indeed not motivated to perform that job. Then if there is no right motivation, what will happen to job performance? You know that job performance is a function of capability as well as motivation. Capability, motivation, environment, these are the three determinants which determine job performance of any employee. So assume that the person is not competent also. Then there is a need of training this person. You know, whether the company, I mean, uh, whether the relevant management you know, has considered that, the training, giving the right training to this person and then asking the person. So of course, first the getting the willingness of the person to get the transfer and then giving the training so that the person will be able to perform the new job. So all these things were not done. Also then uh, recent file, it is, not, it is not possible to get the expected productivity from Mr. Kamal after transferring. Then no point of transferring. 
right okay uh, then uh, the second question if you were the relevant marriage of hr how would you have been dealt with this okay this is one approach i am not telling that this is the best approach available but this at least this is a good approach tell me that good approach discuss with mr kamal the first thing first one discuss with mr kamal about the intention of outsourcing and attempt you know attempt you know attempt to get his consent his uh, his uh, you know ideas suggestions and then then second one assess accurately the cost and benefits of outsourcing then third one study past performance of mr kamal then fourth one get the willingness of mr kamal if benefits of outsourcing exceed the cost of outsourcing and also then give a training for the new job then promote him after a training using his you know using him as a consultant why not instead of transferring as a consultant some you know of purchasing and you know related matters then who uh, then he would have been a delight so anyway right okay so then in the actual case uh the court decided that the the organization was wrong the employee was right then court court decided that the decision of transferring and decision of terminating both were wrong illegal so in fact normally there is no in you know in this type of case there's no possibility of reinstatement so uh, what do you call reinstate you know reinstating reinstating the employee that means uh, restoring you know giving again this job you know job of purchasing to the employee that is not usually practical even you know after uh, this uh, manager started resume the job again uh, is very hard to you know uh, develop a good relationship between this uh, employee this manager and others you know who made the decisions so therefore as usual then in this actual case the court decided to you know uh, court, the court ordered the company to give a compensation a big compensation to this manager okay right so that is student who responded you know if he is not satisfied he can ask questions okay then shall we go to uh, the other uh, types of employee movements demotions so don't worry all these things are in the not you are supposed to then study the not so in that way i have been fair to you by giving almost everything in the not okay then demotion is the opposite of a promotion so then essentially there should be a decrease of the pay and also less prestigious job title demote demote transfer promote so it is possible to demote also so generally demotions are not encouraged to practice because demoted people are not going to be happy then more likely that they are not going to produce the expected performance they might engage in sabotage they might engage in some bad things even hurting customers who are regular then however a time may come to the organization to do a demotion or demotions then what is the major reason of course disciplinary of course there may be some employees you know, okay right according to professor memoria reasons of causes of demotions when departments are combined and some jobs are eliminated you know in case of an amalgamation combining merging employees are often required to accept lower level positions 
assume until no mercy is restored such a demotion is not a black mark against an employee then hopefully the employee will accept that in a you know rather than retrenchment rather than termination in advocacy on the part of employees in terms of job performance are this you know attitude problem capability then demotion because of a change in technology methods and practices assume there is an old manager who you know who who is impossible i mean who is not capable of becoming an updated person technology savvy per, or technology you know capable person technology wise and rather than terminating if the you know it is possible that the the, the relevant all manager accepts a demotion okay then this is a five fall policy that uh, uh, you know the, the the good manager will be able to follow if that manager wants to do managing demotions in good way of course a clear and reasonable list of rules we have to frame this information should be clearly communicated to all concerned there should be a competent investigation of any alleged violation especially disciplinary things right okay all right provision for review even you know the if you know we can you are for a then you know for a temporary period we can give a promotion and if the employee you know becomes a very good employee high perform disciplinary wise also very good and then we can cancel the demotion or we can now stop the demotion and then we can restore the person to the previous position or even with a transfer sorry uh, with a promotion okay so likewise you know please uh, read these things well you know the certain you know uh, guidelines right in order to save you know so i will go to this one the dismissals that's of course you know nerapa hari in singular we call nerapa hari you know that is a kind of uh, termination but you know a dismissal you know the employee wants to serve but the employer doesn't wants the service of the employee that's why the employer does a dismissal so this is a type of employee separation initiated and finalized by the management of the organization not by the particular employee who is dismissed you are fired i wish and you know i i expect that you will never come to you will never be able to face this type of situation so misconduct is the general cause of dismissal so what is uh, misconduct and all this right so under discipline management i discuss and uh, you know you got the entire chapter on discipline management okay so then i will say for oh, these are some serious acts of i mean some acts of serious misconduct or some serious acts you know which can be considered as serious uh, misconduct so which i mean these acts justify dismissal principles of manage dismissal the employee is entitled to dismiss an employee on disciplinary grounds as far as it is justifiable no problem on disciplinary ground we can terminate an employee there is possibility of challenging an unfair dismissal by an employee in front of a labor tribunal 
This challenge should be made within three months, if there is. Yeah, this, you know, terminated, I mean, dismissed employee can make a fight against the organization, against the relevant managers before the court. But that has to be done within three months from the date of dismission. That is according to Sri Lankan law. So there is a special act called Employee Termination Act. The dismissal has a significant negative impact on the career status, personal life, all these things. So therefore, this is a very unpleasant thing. But anyway, so in fact, dismissal is a traumatic experience, very unpleasant and upsetting for all concerned, including managers who design. Hence, a decision of dismissal needs to be taken carefully. So what are the principles that I can recommend? Conduct a proper domestic investigation, of course, which I mentioned even. In case, in case of acts of misconduct, which are not serious, dismissal should be done as the last step. Can you remember progressive discipline system is suggested? Then who is going to make the decision of dismissal? Uh, that has to be centralized. It is very dangerous to decentralize the legitimate authority of making a decision of dismission. So therefore, you know, idea, you know, we have to centralize that authority. Usually the general manager and the relevant uh, top manager of the relevant department and the human resource manager, they can get together and make the decision. Or a committee, you know, so normally committee consisting of more senior managers then advantages of team working can be obtained. Before dismissing any employee, you or she must be given an opportunity to explain. Can you remember law of natural justice? I mentioned that. Also without sufficient evidence, we should not do that. We must have sufficient evidence to establish fairness of our decision of terminating, dismissing. So before a third party like, you know, Labor Commission, Labor Tribunal, of course, we have to act in good faith always. Okay, so likewise, uh, you know, without delay, we have to do all these things. We should not penalize the employee twice. Or, so maybe I'm repeating, well, you know, what I have done under management of employee discipline. So we, I, you know, so therefore, I will save the time. Then terminations. Let us go to another type of employee movement. Termination. Uh, that is the complete end of service of an employee by the employee. Consequently, there will not be any relationship. The relationship, employment relationship, gets you know broken forever when a termination happens between the relevant employee and the relevant organization. Dismissal, I told you, that is also a type of terminations. But there are other, you know, types of termination apart from this uh, dismissal. Type of employee separation, either by the management of the organization or by the particular employee. So it is possible to have a termination that, that is decided by the relevant employee, not only by the relevant organization. The types and reasons for terminations. Resignation, one thing. Of course, you know that some resignations are voluntary while others are compulsory. Especially, you know, if an employee has done a very serious thing, very bad thing, like sexual harassment, uh, then, uh, but assume the employee, you know, the, the relevant manager or the employee has been an outstanding employee, high performer, uh, then rather than, you know, terminating, the, rather than dismissing, you know, the, the, the HRM, the, the, the top management will ask the relevant person to resign, to resign.
voluntary resignation occur when the employees choose to resign due to reasons which may include the following. Compass resignation occur when employees are forced to, like, you know, my example here, the manager, you know, who, uh, yes, who did uh, serious misconduct like sexual harassment or serious internal conflict, serious internal conflict. Then uh, termination at the probation, you know, termination at the end of probation also possible. Poor performance, usually the major reason. If there is no possibility of giving an extension also, then the termination at the end of probation. Then vacation of employment. Assume, you know, the employee, okay, the earlier, uh, the, the, the earlier, you know, the first application that I discussed for this lecture. Mr. Kulasekar, yes, vacated of employment. You know, you usually majority of companies follow this type of policy. If the employee becomes absent, you know, for two days or more than two days without informing to the relevant management, that employee is considered as vacated. That means uh, the employee has no intention of, you know, continuing the work. So then the employee is considered as, you know, have been vacated. In some organizations, uh, three days or more than three days. Okay, right. Then constructive termination, there's another thing. Assume I don't like, you know, I, I, I really hate you. I want to get rid of from you. I don't want you, you know, under me any longer. Uh, then I may create, you know, a, you know, kind of termination. I may create a situation, you know, that will force you to resign. Uh, that is called constructive termination. According to Sri Lankan labor law, that is illegal. Purposefully, the employee influences the employee so that he or she leaves the organization permanently. Maybe not giving resources including people or giving uh, very unfair, you know, targets so that the employee will not be able to achieve them. Then at the end, then the employee will be, a, will be rated as poor or as average. Okay, right. So maybe even, you know, scolding and all this, and then finally, the, if, the, if the relevant employee, you know, has no ability of managing anger and other weaknesses, then the employee tends to, have, you know, develop a serious conflict with the top management, then easily those top managers, you know, can uh, transfer things into a case of, uh, I mean, disciplinary ground, with, you know, transfer, you know, transfer the normal things into a disciplinary condition, a disciplinary violation or discipline, how do you call that? How can I say that? Uh, you know, the, 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 we can, the, the, the top managers can influence the relevant manager so that he will, you know, unwillingly, inadvertently engage in a serious misconduct, disciplinary wise. Then that misconduct can be used, you know, as a fair reason for terminating the relevant employee, dismissing the relevant employee. So these are some examples, you know, which are not acceptable and which uh, 
are usually considered as constructive termination, which is illegal. Okay, all right. Better, better, you know, please read them and then try to understand. These things are useful, you know, for you, not only for this course, you know, passing, getting a pass from this course, not only for that, but also, you know, you are going to work for many years as an employee. Therefore, these principles, these things are useful for you also as an employee. Also as a manager who has to manage others, these things as a line manager or as a staff manager, maybe as a human resource manager. Termination to retaliate. That is also illegal, not bona fide fighting. Okay, principles of managing termination. Adhere to legal provisions. Mainly there are two. Either, you know, we have to get the uh, previous consent of the relevant employee whom we are going to terminate. If the employee doesn't give that consent, then we have to get the consent of the labor commission. The commissioner, or the, the nowadays, uh, what is the post is, yes, commissioner general of labor. Okay, then this act, you know, the, the termination act is not applicable to an employer who has an average workforce of less than 50 employees. Also, it is not applicable for the government, the local government service commission and our cooperative society, any public corporation. Right, then the termination of employment of any employee who has been employed by an employer for a period of less than 180 days, including of days of absence due to legally acceptable reasons in the continuous period of 12 months, commencing from the date of employment, if such termination takes place within that period of 12 months, very long. I hope you know, please study and then try to understand. For a period of less than 180 employees, yes, termination of an employer when any who has been employed. If such termination takes place within that period of 12 months, some, uh, okay, uh, some organizations, you know, may exploit this uh, provision anyway to, to their advantage by giving contract appointments, so you know, the what you call casual appointments. Specify clearly the notice of termination. This is very important. Usually giving one month's notice or by the payment of one month's salary. In some organizations, three months notice. Okay, all right. So then authority to make the decision of termination should not be given to one manager. Right, so these things, then act in good. Train all the relevant managers about terminations in order to avoid violations of law. You are also violations of policies, procedures, and rules. When there is an industrial dispute, don't terminate. This is another one. Okay, right. Then maintaining proper records, creating, yes. Now the retrenchments, another type of employee movements. Alternatively, this is called redundancy. Redundancies, retrenchments. What is a retrenchment? Uh, that's a form of separation and it can be defined as the permanent termination of the employee or the, the service of the employee or the employment of the employee due to a surplus of employees within the organization. If there is a surplus of employees, if there are certain employees who are in excess, uh, then a ret retrenchment can be done.
And what are the reasons for the surplus? The close of a branch, the close of a factory, the need to survive during a recession, loss of a market for the product, use of capital intensive production methods, you know, shifting from labor intensive method to capital int intensive method, restructuring or rationalizing, reducing certain departments, so likewise. Okay. Retrenchments normally, you know, it's not a, a pleasing thing because employees are going to be jobless. Employees are going to be jobless because of this corona situation also. There may be a need of doing retrenchment. You know, in an organization which lost profits or which lost markets because of corona. Because of Corona, the, you know, there are booming situations for some businesses. But for some businesses, of course, significant negative effect. Like uh, organization engaged in tourism. Right. And principles of managing retrenchments. Adhere to legal provisions. Again, again, according to, you know, Industry Disputes Act. When an employer intends to affect uh, retrenchment in respect of any employee, maybe one, two, three, four. So I know one recent example, not, not because of Corona, before the Corona came, uh, 750 employees were retrenched by one private organization, 750. Employees were retrenched. You know, a big number in Sri Lanka. So, uh, before doing such a retrenchment, it is the duty of the employer. First one, A, give to that employee at least one month's notice in writing of such intention. And if that employee is a member of a trade union, uh, then a copy has to be given to trade union also. Then the B, sending a copy of such notice to the labor commission. Uh, that is also compulsory, mandated, legal requirement. Then also retrenchment shall not be effected until after the expiry of two months after the date of the notice. So assume today we are going to give that notice to the Labor Commission. Our intention of doing, uh, our intention of retrenching, assume 25 employees. Then from today we have to wait for another two months. Before two months, if you are going to do that, implement that decision, uh, that is illegal. Also, when there is an industrial dispute, because of this intent, you know, because of the plan of retrenchment. Before the expiry of the two months after the date of the notice. You know, so I assume when an industry distribute arising out of the intended retrenchment is referred for settlement before the expiry of the two months after the date of yes. Employees shall not effect the retrenchment within a period of two months after the reference of such dispute. Again, you know, within a period of two months, you can't do that. After the reference of such dispute. These provisions, you know, shall not apply to an employer, you know, who has uh, employees, you know, less than, okay, who has, yes, workforce of less than 15 employees. Your right also not applicable for government organizations. Also not applicable for an employee who has been employed in any industry for a period of less than one year. Not relevant. Also seasonal effect, you know, uh, any industry which is of a seasonal character like tourism, yes. In which work is performed intermittently.
for several months there is a peak for several months there is a down like printing printing industry tourism industry maybe uh, fishing industry specify clearly the notice of retrenchment authority to make the decision who is going to make that decision normally don't give that decision to only one person one manager the authority to make the decision of retrenchment should be given to a committee usually consisting of more senior managers several including the chief executive officer develop a good scheme to determine employees who are retrenched you know if it is difficult to develop a good scheme then normally you have to follow a method called lifo last in first out in sri lanka the employer federation also employer employer fed what is this uh, employer federation yes the manual of personal procedure written by mr amar singh yes published by employees federation of ceylon so according to that manual also so what is the recommendation to start retrenching from the most junior person and work upwards that means last in first out the last you know assume uh, uh, in the last week one person was hired and uh, next week we have to retrench one person at uh, that person we have to do we have to retrench not the person who was hired two months ago you know as the second person if we will have to retrench uh, then we have to use that person who was hired two months ago according to the method also you know the popular method is that you know according to professor memory also uh <clears throat> right not all employees are going to be retrenched only some developing a good scheme that's the problem so i will show you an example a typical example of a good scheme act in good faith always yes this is uh, this recommendation is relevant to all termination dismissal or give retrenchment uh, pay to each employee also super innovation you know like epf etf graduate gratuity all this you know will have to be paid will have to be paid also there is a schedule you know payment schedule according to industrial dispute act so according to that schedule you have to pay the compensation retrenchment average of course you can pay more than the amount you know that has been specified in the schedule but less than it is illegal you can't pay less then arrange alternative jobs if possible you know And that is a good practice of hrm if the organization can transfer the employee to another job instead of retrenchment it is better to do that transfer assist employees who have been planned to be redundant to find alternative employments if there is another organization which has vacancies you know uh, which can be filled by you know your employees who are going to be retrenched and then you can help in that way also you can uh, you know you can give facilities all these facilities you know for the employees to participate in interviews and then using mails computers even uh transport facility to uh participate in interviews retrench employee should be given preference in filling future job vacancies assume in future the situation you know when, when the situation becomes okay as usual in the future okay then preference can be given to employees you know who were rich uh, retrench provided that 
they were qualified suitably. They were high performers. I see employees who have been planned to be redundant to find out. Okay, here. Right. Then, uh, or before this, I will show you an example, a typical example. In the note that is there. Okay, have a serious look at this. A typical retrenchment escape. So you can see introduction, then objectives. So what are the objectives? To give fair and sufficient treatment to employees whose employments are terminated permanently due to redundancy. Because you know, normally, you know, uh, I can teach in this way relatively in an easy way. You can learn in an easy way. But when we do retrenchment practically, it's a very deep, you know, deep pleasing thing, unpleasant thing. High tendency of having problems, conflicts, disappointments, legal cases, legal cases, conflicts, even bribes, influences, political influences, personal influences, internal political influences, even national political influences are possible. So I can remember, you know, several cases, but I have no time. One case, you know, uh, the general manager of that, you know, the, 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 the chief executive officer of that organization wanted to ret uh, ret uh, retrench uh, 500 employees. Let me say, you know, exactly, I can't remember the number, 500 employees. Then, uh, you know, the, there was a list consisting of 20 or 25 employees whom really this CEO Hated, hated. Then, uh, you know, but they were really high performers, high performers, excellent in terms of job performance. But the CEO, you know, maliciously wanted to retrench these people. These people, some of them, you know, would be, uh, would be possible threats to this CEO to continue his top management chief, chief executive position. So therefore, this chief executive officer, you know, gave a list of, uh, I mean, names of the employees to be retrenched. Then forced the relevant human resource manager to implement that list. But the human resource manager had uh, sufficient evidence about the malicious intention of the CEO. There were certain employees, you know, who were really bad bad performers, they were definitely supposed to be uh, terminated. But their names were not in the list. Their names were not in the list because they were having relationships with the CEO. Personally, the CEO has a willingness towards you know, uh, that group of employees. Then uh, the human resource manager told, sorry, sorry sir, according to uh, legal things, uh, managerial things, and my ethics, you know, I can't do. The human resource manager responded. Then what was the reaction of the CEO? He said, if you can't do that, okay, there is a way, you know, still the vacancy for the group human resource manager is there. Then I will, okay, because you have been an excellent uh, human resource manager to me, I am not going to terminate you, fire you, but I will keep you forever, you know, until you retire. If you are going to continue under me until you retire, I will keep you. But that vacancy for the group human resource manager, immediately I will fill by using an outside. Indeed, he did that. And then he hired a person, you know, with legal background who, who had a good track record of retrench people without uh, the minimum amount of complaints, minimum amount of uh, compensation. Okay, so that is an example, you know. So things can happen like that. 
then to ensure the degree of suffering by the employees and the companies minimized to yes the the company the employees and the company, yes minimized to possible extent right okay all right i am not uh, supposed to read all your advanced students i am also tired policy right is the general policy of the company to avoid retrenchment as much as possible every possible attempt is made to absorb redundancy you know by the natural waste state. what is what is natural waste state with regard to employees retirements deaths resignations and leave of absence okay so then uh, right so likewise then the retrenchment policy is based on the following principles so where we know when we retain we don't consider gender like you know so normally women employees you now preference is given to women employees usually there is a possibility you know because of maternity leave you know other things so that is very unfair never forget that female employees you know maybe mothers great mothers of uh, great you know male employees mothers for great male employees never forget that selection method right following points are to be given under the three criteria okay three criteria were considered as far as this example is con concerned at the time of writing this example so i uh, you know the three criteria came to my mind one is uh, year the each i mean the year of service right each year of service uh, that is in other words in uh, in in another word that is seniority then 25 points for job performance uh, that is in another word merit merit for job performance right you know under this there are five standard 25 points for excellent performance then 20 points for good performance so likewise then five points for age, right? Age is the third criteria. Then seniority, merit, and the age. Three criteria. Then under this, so there are five standards. One point, only one point if the age is between 49 and 54 years. I think you can understand the rationality. Why? Normally these people had a chance of serving for many years. So they are nearing the retirement. You know, so providing a kind of, you know, the principle of uh, parity, P-A-R-I-T-Y, parity. Giving an equal chance to every employee to serve, you know, for an equal period of, yes, employment. Five point, if the age is less than 31, even younger people, you know, can produce, I mean, can create a higher amount of productivity, especially in case of uh, manual work. So according to three criteria, employees are to be, yes, they are arranged in the, in the descending order, quantitatively. The first person who is to be retrenched, uh, yes, is the person who got the lowest point. Then the next person with the lowest point, so likewise, okay? Then the decision-making authority. A special committee is appointed consisting of indeed there should be you know a chart manager human resources specialist if there is a specialist then the relevant departmental heads and the general manager who will be the chairperson usually the ceo the general manager assume the general manager is the ceo then who will be the chairperson and procedure for retrenchments what is the first step re-examine the human resource requirement for all the jobs for which employees are in excess you know then decide the exact number of employees to be retrenched you know we have to consider you know all, all these factors you know which have an impact significant impact on future demand for employees you know retirement resignations leave of absence even the strategic plans all these we have to consider so then re-examine the human resource requirements how many employees, you know, what are the types of employees we, you know, need for the future, maybe for the next five years? And how many employees, you know, we will need 
for the relevant types of employees. The types of employees and the number of employees for each type. And then decide the exact number of employees to be retrenched. Then select employees for retrenchment. Quantitatively decide points for each employee by following the above mentioned one, this one. All right. Then uh, determine compensation retrenchment benefits for each employee. At least the minimum period prescribed by the law. For this purpose, follow the legislation of the termination of Employment of Workmen Act. Workmen, okay, it, it means work women also. Especially quantum of uh, compensation payable to workers as for the as per the formula set out in Schedule Two. Okay, so please go to internet and then you may be able to find out Schedule Two of this Act. That each okay, give each relevant employee at least one month's notice. Okay, can you remember one of the principles in writing of such intention of retrenchment? And if the employee is a member of a trade union, yes, the copy to that trade union. And also the Commission of Labor should receive a copy of our intention of retrenchment. And then, of course, effect the implementation of the plan. Effect the retirements, retrenchments, not retirement, sorry. Effect the retrenchments after the expiry of two months after the date of the notice. If there is an industrial you know, uh, problem, uh, then again, we, you know, for another period, we have to wait. Okay, all right. So now the last uh, type of employee movements, which I have planned to teach. Re retirements. Everyone has to face this one. I hope, you know, People, you know, who are listening, who are listening to me, who are listening to me, they will not, you know, get these wishes. They will not get uh, deem, uh, demotions. But everyone will have to one day face the retirement. It's inevitable. If you have a job, if you entered a certain profession, definitely there will be a retirement. It's also a form of employee separation. Right. But, you know, it is the particular time in a person's life when he or she stops working. So when the employee reaches the retirement age, usually yes. Not usually. Not usually. Definitely yes. When the employee reaches the retirement age, the organization will have to end the service of that employee. Or let me use the usually also, but there may be some cases the retirement will have to be implemented before the employee reaches the retirement age. Can you think of an example? Okay, happy retirement. Retirement party, yes. One thing we have to do, especially from the HR department. HR department, retirement party. Compass retirement. The employee will have to get retired after reaching a specific age. In Sri Lanka, this was 55. Uh, recently, uh, yes, recently there was an amendment, and now uh, it is uh, 60. The only exception, you know, several years ago, un, you know, until uh, recent, yeah, yes, only exception is that the university teachers in state universities. For them, the retirement, mandate retirement age is 65. Now for few professions like uh, Supreme Court judges, the age of 65 is applicable. And for medical doctors, uh, if my memory is correct, uh, uh, 62, the, the, right. But generally 60, both, you know, for, it is applicable equally for male as well as female male employees and female employees. You know, it is, uh, you know, this, uh, we, can, we can have a discussion, you know, should we have 55 as the mandatory retirement age of 60 or 65 
or 70 you know we can have a discussion serious discussion but the time doesn't permit so never forget that there are young employees who are you know there are young graduates you know who want to enter the employment market who, who, who come to yes young graduates who are coming to employment market undergraduates who expect to come to the employment market okay i'm graduate who have already you know come to the employment market seeking jobs also young graduates who were hired as junior employees by organizations and also there are young people you know who are uh, very serious having high expectations and they want to really work hard and smart they want to become you know real innovators there are such people also never forget right uh, on the other side you know when a serious person becomes more and more mature uh, he will be able to or she will be able to uh, you know have what is called tacit knowledge which will really useful for creating and innovating creating and innovating even that type of person can be used as a consultant to train many young people can be used as a mentor can be used as a mentor so therefore there should be a trade off maybe the i don't know you know i i am not going to tell that you know because i need further i mean a further discussion with many facts and then i can conclude but the type doesn't also there's no need of because this is generally charing then forced retirement uh, that is you know because of maybe violations of certain rules serious rules if an employee is found guilty either in court of law or has violated the serious rules enumerated in the service agreement or uh, that employee can be forced by the employer to retire from the service some actual examples come to my mind but time doesn't permit very interesting examples i have even even coming from my students some of my students forced retirement right then premature retirement because of usually the health reason serious family problems bad health maybe now the employee's age is assume uh, 50 okay 54 and uh, then uh, you know today the person can get a premature retirement right best wishes for all of us happy retirement after 25 years of lawyer service john can exchange his desk chair for a desk chair best wishes from all of us happy retirement right principles of managing retirements clear specification of the retirement age very very important very very important is it 55 and then or oh, mandatory 55 or mandatory 60 and then if if mandatory is 60 and then are we going to give further extensions to 61 62 so likewise or oh, no extension at all maximum 60 are these things you know policy wise we have to decide in a good uh, scheme in a good scheme for retirement then communication of the retirement age this you know has to be included in the employment handbook and also the manual of hr normally a good organization you know has a manual of hr notification of retirement this needs to be done to the relevant employee by the HR department when the relevant employee is near the retirement age, normally three months before he or she is due to retire. The notification should include the retirement benefits, gratuity, special financial support, and due to the employee. 
copies of this notification, of course, we have to send to the relevant departmental head, the department that uh, does payment, financial department. Then determination of the birth day. Usually we have to use the birth, you know, the, the, the date of birth day given in the birth certificate of the relevant employee. Otherwise, the, the date, you know, shown in the identity card of the employee. Possibility of extension, are that also we have to consider. Normally, maximum extension period is five years normally. Then what are the criteria that we are going to consider when we give an extension? Definitely, we have to consider merit rather than the age. Then superannuation, of course, EPF, ETF, Employment Provident Fund, Employment uh, Trust Fund, grat gratuity, so these things, right. In our country, many private sector organizations do not have a pension scheme for the employees. Then employee fund, yes, provident, trust fund, uh, gratuity. So they are superannuation, yes. Okay, so the relevant contributions compulsory are made on behalf of its employees. Every retired employee must have a reasonable finance to spend the rest of his or her life. Then farewell function, yes, a special farewell function can be held on behalf of the retiring employee. This is usually a task of the human resource manager. Also some, you know, the, maybe a financial gift, a non-financial gift for the retiring employee. For some people, you know, retirement is a very positive thing going to be a very positive thing. Some, for some employees, it is going to be a very distressful, stressful situation. Retirement itself, you know, can give a depression to some employees. Okay, so then the time doesn't permit these things, uh, doesn't permit to talk about. Yes, but you know, we have to make, I mean, we have to have, we have to manage employees so that they will be able to accept this retirement as a positive thing and willingly they will be able to accept this and then willingly they will be able to, I mean, <clears throat> accept and then leave the organization and then leave, I mean, happily after the retirement. Of course, the financial things, other things, are the determinants of the success of life of after retirement. Anyway, dear students, now the time is uh, five. According to my phone, exactly five. This is enough, I think. Any questions? I am supposed to give a summary, but you know, as an ideal teacher, but the time doesn't permit. So we discuss, okay, you know, we discuss employee movements, mainly promotions and then transfers. And then we came to demotions in a brief way, the dismissals, then terminations, then retrenchments, and finally retirements. Retirements. In your north, you know, there are uh, you know, two skill builders. One is for development of a scheme of uh, retirement for employees. Another one is uh, development of a scheme of transfers for non-manager staff. Have a serious look. You know, those uh, schemes need to be filled specifically by you. If you do the exercises, you know, from, from these uh, applications, uh, you can learn certain things. Okay, then uh, before I finish, any questions? Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Yeah. For employee promotion, sir, is there any governing framework or some sort of framework being followed globally? Uh, no, there is sir? no. There is no. 
there is no <clears throat> so if you okay because uh, uh, how many textbooks uh, i have used uh, more than 25 more than now 40 really only textbooks not not the books you know there are so many books that i read and then i am using uh, also the, still there are certain books which i did not have the time to read so according to what i have read there's no so it depends on the particular organization that's why the, you know that's why we have to develop a good skin that's why you must have kind of expertise in a charm especially in uh, employee movements so as to develop a better skin only an expert can do that learning a charm in a general way is not sufficient you have to learn a charm in a specialized way so that means you know you have to do several courses of a charm so that you will be able to get that expertise if you are interested in. So otherwise, yes, if your field is different, then you know how to get that. Okay, normally there is no, but uh, even uh, yes, if you refer to a good textbook, you may be able to get uh, several good books. You know, uh, can give several examples which you can use as typical examples. You can adjust or you can adopt both way in both ways, you know. Adjust or adopt. Adopting means without changing, you can use that. Then adapt, you know, uh, adapt E, uh, A, D, E, P, D, P, D, adapt. Alternative term, uh, adjust. So then you can, with modifications, you can use that. It seems that you are the only person who is asking questions. Your voice is uh, familiar to me. So what about others? I don't know whether they are with me. I hope that they are with me rather than engaging in fake behavior. Right. Okay, then uh, I wish you all the best. And yes, uh, this is the end of today's session. Take care. Thank you very much for your time and efforts, sir.